Good morning, everybody. Dr. Richard Alm here. Camera set a little weird. Um, we got Dr. Muse and myself, uh, some McKenzie certified practitioners. We're rather proud of that because the, the test was hard. Uh, but Brad had a really interesting case this week, and we kind of wanted to talk about one, one type or one classification of you know some low back pain stuff that McKenzie method that will kind of demonstrate some of the stuff that you might see if you were to come into the office. Um, that we use with these people. So this is super, super powerful. Um, it's actually called the lateral shift. Um, and I'm gonna have Brad kind of take that because he had a really interesting case referred over from uh, one of our favorite medical doctors in the area. And I think, uh, if I may say so myself, I think Brad did a great job and kind of crushed the case so far. Thank you. Um, yeah, so what we're talking about is what's called a lateral shift. And I'm a proud recipient of one myself from time to time that likes to pop up. Are you a lot? You are a lateral? Uh, last time was two Thanksgivings ago. I was about to drive back to Ohio from St. Louis and morning of, I just wake up and pop out, <laughs> pop out this way. So my favorite he, person on the planet is, is a lateral shift also. Thanks. She's an Ipsy. Oh, oh you're, she. She. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. She's so a, my two favorite people. Are <laughs> yeah. So this is, uh, like Dr. Elm said, this is a classification within that uh, McKinsey system that we talk so much about. Um, and at its simplest, what the person may walk in with is you'll see the hips shifted to one side. So in this case, we would call this a right lateral shift because my shoulders are going to the right. Now, when we talk about this, there's even further classification of it. There's a uh, contralateral and an ipsilateral shift. So if someone comes in with a shift like this, first thing I want to know is, well, I would say second thing I want to know. I want to know, can they correct it themselves? But then also, do you have any leg symptoms? And if you have leg symptoms, which leg is it on? Yeah. And I pray that when they come in, it's in the opposite leg. So if I'm shifted to the right, I'm hoping that they have symptoms in the left leg. That's called a contralateral shift. Which is way more common, and that's <clears throat> you can think of it this way. If, if you have, usually this is with legitimate structural herniations of the disc where um, the, you know, the, the, well, how do I explain this? Not the tube is left to jelly, but, or the jelly is left to donut, but you've kind of stretched out the part of the disc or the annular fibers, and that sort of like pushed it out and bulged it. And a lot of times if it bulges, say, to one side, your brain just says, I got to get off of this. And so then it shifts away from that to take the pressure off of it. That's kind of what's happening. So if we have pain on the left side shifting away, that's the contralateral uh, shift that he's talking about. Right. The ipsilateral shift, the reason he says that he, we hope that that doesn't happen is they're a little bit more difficult. They are totally fixable, but they're more challenging and they're oftentimes a little bit more stubborn. So we like getting people better as fast as possible and the ipsilateral shift is a little bit bigger challenge. The way I think about this is that they basically, let's say that they still have the left leg symptoms, but now instead of shifting away, they've shifted kind of over the area that was the problem. So now they're like even farther beyond it. And that's a much, much more stubborn case to treat, but we'll kind of show you how we would treat that. So why don't you talk about your case actually? Yeah, so um, when we talk about symptoms into the leg, things that we're referring to are, it could be something like numbness and tingling, it could be actual motor weakness, which we aren't big fans of. Should we sit? I feel like standing is weird. Okay, we're done. <laughs> That's just like, we're done. is this better? Does this I'm short enough where below? I still fit in the frame. But Yeah, sure. So we have to do a full neurological exam to see, are these nerve roots affected? So things we're checking are like knee extension, can you bring the ankle up? Can you bring the toes up? Things like that. We're checking reflexes. We're checking sensation. Does both sides feel the same? So when these shifts occur, especially if it's a hard shift, like I mentioned, a hard shift would be when the person's shifting, they just cannot correct it themselves or they can get there and it just pops right back into uh, that shifted position. These need to be corrected, uh, corrected by a professional. So yeah. like that's, you don't, Unfortunately, a hard shift is not something that you sleep off. I mean, no, maybe you... in, you know, every once in a while there's a case where maybe some rest helps that. But for the most part, these are cases that need a manual correction. That's something we're going to talk about. Well, it's important because <clears throat> the longer you stay there, the more the soft tissue gets um, distorted uh, and, and the easier it is for you to stay over there. So this is, we're not typically a three, four, five times a week kind of place even early on in the treatment plan, 
But in these cases, sometimes we have to treat them back to back days because we want to make sure that we correct that shift before we go into like the normal treatment plan. Mm -hmm. So these are, if you know somebody or if you ever unfortunately get a shift, uh, it's, it's kind of something that you want to get fixed. And, and I can, you know, after doing this for over a decade, I don't think there's a better system right. to correct that than McKenzie, which is what we'll show you today. Yep. So I have two specific cases I'll talk about. One's a contralateral, the first one we mentioned. One's an ipsilateral. So to kind of illustrate how those are two somewhat very different things, the first one was someone who was ready to go on vacation that day. Ugh. So talk about being put in the pressure cooker, but... She yeah. came in. By pressure cooker, he means like, hey, doc, uh, I, need, I, I, need some, <laughs> I need some help. And oh, by the way, I fly out tomorrow. No, it was a drive. Fifth oh, to, even it, better. Driving to Florida that day. Cool. Tons of pain. Kids waiting in the car. Fix me. Um, she had symptoms. She was shifted away. Symptoms in the opposite leg. So that's a contralateral shift. Luckily, we were able to get her corrected that day and send her home or on vacation with the appropriate exercises, appropriate uh, measures to take while making that drive and she was able to go and, and have a good vacation. Now on the other side of that is the ipsilateral shift, which we said is not it's so much harder. fun and it's a little bit more difficult to treat. So more recently I've had a case of a ipsilateral shift, a uh, guy playing basketball and just out of nowhere just shifted. No real, you know, big fall or anything which like that. Which does happen quite a bit. They'll say like, I didn't even do anything and, I, mm -hmm. and now I'm shifted or now I have pain down my leg. I just woke up. That happens all the time. Right. So actually was treated for a couple weeks prior to seeing me. Um, and this is where I make an argument for specificity sometimes. Like you can't with a lateral shift throwing a, you know, quote unquote generic core strengthening program at them is not gonna be the fix. We have to be specific with their yeah. evaluation and treatment. So um, he was doing okay, but still having the leg symptoms was still notably shifted when he came in. So we had to go after some of these manual corrections that we're going to show you here in a, in a second and uh, doing much better. We still have work to do, but it was not a, you know, see him that morning, send him to Florida kind of thing. It's a, we got to work on this daily for now until we can get those symptoms out of the leg, get strength back and correct that shift. Yeah. But I mean, the good, the good thing is with the, we'll, we'll show you these real quick. We don't want to take you know, all, all morning here, but um, we'll show you some of these corrections. I don't really know a way or a therapy that would as quickly correct these shifts. The other therapies, you're just sort of like waiting and hoping, like if you're using traction or maybe you're, you know, using some soft tissue stuff or general core exercises, you're just kind of hoping the shift goes back. With McKenzie, you're going right after the shift and we're trying to correct it as quickly as possible so that we can get them into that right position. And then from there, we would continue with the normal treatment plan stuff, you know, that might be, um, you know, the, the core exercise things or some soft tissue work or whatever. But the primary goal in the beginning is one, correct the shift and two, get the symptoms out of the leg. That's called centralizing. And to me, if I've got someone that's unfortunate to have pain down their leg or down their arm, that's the top priority to get rid of that. Cause it's, the, it's, it's a very, very strong indicator that we can actually correct um, that case and, and, and fix the problem. Yeah. All right. You, you, you want to show, how about you go ahead and demonstrate them on me? Okay. <clears throat> Put my coffee down here. We'll start with the standing. Yeah. So the, this is the more, I guess, aggressive of the two cause they're standing up and it's important because remember Wait. if you've got pain in your left side and you sort of shift away from it, it's really gravity that's causing a lot of the problems. And we've got many more moves than we would just use to, that we're going to show you today to kind of correct this, that they're going to just go through, you know, force progressions. And we make sure that the patient can kind of tolerate these force progressions so that we can get them better as quickly as possible without, you know, causing, you know, aggravation or, you know, too much pain. Um, so the one that we're going to show you just because we're standing up is, I almost wore blue pants too. Man, that would have been really awkward. Um, is that, we're gonna show you the, it's called manual shift correction and standing. Uh, this is the one ultimately we have to kind of finish with. A lot of times we'll start with the, the one that we're gonna show you with second. It's a little bit more gentle. There's, no, there's not as much what's called axial compression to the spine, so that's squishing down. When you have axial compression, it increases the pressure on the disc and that makes it a little bit easier for it to get aggravated. So, um, Dr. Muse comes in here and he's shifted towards me. Remember the upper body is the marker, so we're calling that a right lateral shift. Um, and then whether it's ipsy or contra has to do with where the, where the symptoms are. Are they in his left leg? That's a contra. If it's in his right leg, that's an ipsy. 
what we have to do, if you notice, actually you can't see his feet. He's got great shoes on, but Thanks. we both do by that, but for that matter. Um, he's shifted and his weight is actually on this leg, right? So he's, he's kind of, he probably would be a little bit more on, the, on here. So he's just getting everything off of that pain on this side. He's just on the right leg, shifted over that side to take as much pressure off as possible. What we have to do is actually sort of correct this. Um, I, I guess it needs to be said, this is not something that I would, we're kind of showing you this as a demonstration so that you're aware of what we might be doing. This is not one that, that I would do on a buddy that's got a problem. You know, some of the bear hug, you know, or, or the, the sleepover kind of, you know, push on the back, you know, get, the, get, get some pops and cracks of your thoracic spine. That one, <laughs> that's a little more understandable. This is not one I would kind of mess with. Um, but I think it's valuable for you guys to see what we would do in the office if we've got these complex cases, you know, that have antalgia or these, these shifts. So we need to get him kind of straightened out. So what we would do is I would be on this side here and I'm gonna basically kind of block. I've got my hands on his hips over here and we're just gonna gently kind of pull him this way if I kind of go overdo it. So just go ahead and shift over. I'm basically gonna like try to pull him all the way over. So I'm pulling his hips towards me and I'm shifting him that way. I would actually do that very, very gently and probably hold those positions for 20, 30, 60 seconds, whatever's necessary so that the muscles can kind of relax because there's a lot of muscle spasming going on in these cases that you have to kind of slowly work through so that we can get them corrected without causing, you know, inordinate amounts of pain. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that one's the manual shift correction. Is there any additions to that one? No, I, like if, if you've ever experienced this, just to give you a heads up, it's not the most fun thing to go through, but like we mentioned before, especially if you have these symptoms into the leg, this is a must do. We have to get the symptoms centralized and the shift corrected. So. People may feel, you know, an increase of pain while they're doing it because if you remember what Dr. Alb said before, there is an actual mechanical blockage to that movement. So the way that we picture it is that we are actually trying to get over that, that mechanical blockage yeah. while we do it. So, Cool. All right. Now we're going to show you one in uh, prone or, or an unloaded position laying on your belly. So again, let's pretend like he's, his torso shifted towards me. So that's a left shift. Um, we might have him go ahead and lift the hips up here, buddy. That's pretty hot. Um, yeah. you've done that before. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's inappropriate, right? Is that, yeah. that, yeah. So basically here we've got it where there's not any gravity uh, acting on the spine, at least in a way that increases the pressure on the disc. So we like that cause it's comfortable for the patient. And now we can basically just gently, I can kind of block here and I can gently lean back. And as I do that, that's actually creating a little bit of a shift and I'm, and I'm able to very, very easily and slowly and progressively as the patient can tolerate, shift them over here and then kind of hold them in that position. So we might kind of slowly shift them over here. I'm sliding his hips towards me. I'm blocking his torso so that we can correct that shift. This is a really, really powerful way to do this. It's oftentimes very comfortable for the patient um, and then from there, we would kind of go through a bunch of other protocols that we don't necessarily need to whistle through today. We want to just kind of keep this short, um, which we're not doing a great job of, and just talk about the shift. So this is kind of where, you know, we would probably start with the patient because we want the, the, the treatment to be as comfortable and as pain-free as possible. In these cases, that's pretty difficult because they can be pretty painful. But correcting the shift is almost... Um, as euphoric is getting, you know, a subluxated shoulder, a dislocated shoulder back in place. I mean, it feels way better once they're there, and then that's when the, the improvement can really happen. Mm -hmm. um, did you have anything to add, sir? I, I think the big thing is if you guys are dealing with back pain, and I mean, if you can pick up on these shifts yourself. Look in the mirror. Yeah. If you're here, okay, well, we need to do something about that. Um, now, we had talked about there's a, there's a soft shift where we may be able to walk you how walk you through how to do it. What we talked about today was more of the hard shift, um, but like I said, it's almost easily diagnosed on yourself. If you're shifted, you got to shift. So yeah, so that's just a, that, that was a little bit more complex case. I mean, like I said, Dr. Muse had a couple of those coming in the door, uh, did a great job with those, and used this McKenzie method that we're you know that we use quite a bit all the time.